Would you like to do a reading? I would love to do a little bit of a reading from Larceny and Lace. My complicated relationship with the local police aside, did the bumps in the night worry me? You bet your French knickers they did. Why the sudden interest in a building that had been boarded up and left undisturbed for more than half a century? I hoped never to find out. Tomorrow I'd start moving in my stock and setting up my displays. How long could it take? I'd only been collecting vintage my whole life. Oi. As I turned onto Bank Street, I heard raised voices in the distance, which anyone who passed the playhouse across from the, my shop heard at one time or another. Broderick Sampson, the curmudgeon of an owner, argued with everyone, just another sign I was home. I pulled into the crowded lot behind Mystic Pizza to view my building from across the street. I had always admired my, the original copper weather vane, a ship in full sail, time-coated a soft green, but I loved the new Victorian street lamps brightening my parking lot and the spotlit old-fashioned tavern sign hanging above the door, vintage magic in bold white on a dark eggplant-colored shield. Behind the shop name stood a pale lavender side silhouette of a woman who could be Jackie O, the 60s being such a popular vintage. I finally uncrated my squalling kitten who would rather have been riding shotgun from the armrest, and she came to make her own assessment. I refused to stress over the parking lot debris marring the scene, empty wire reels, and a mountain of boxes at my front door. You'd think the crew would have cleaned up. The yellow fur ball purred and curled against my, my solar plexus chakra, an intuitive move on her part. She had the uncanny ability to calm me. Because of it, I named her appropriately. What do you think, chakra beautiful? She approved with a soft meow. Genuine delight washed over me. No more weather-ravaged raw wood shack, though we hadn't replaced a splinter that didn't need it. No windows existed on the building's main floor, but I didn't want sunshine fading my vintage treasures anyway. We'd replaced the people door, but the huge, tall, front-facing double doors beside it, built for horse-drawn hearses, were now sealed, though the same could not be said for a similar door at the side of the building. In front, however, their sheer size, in lavender with eggplant crossbeams, made the sage building pop. Magical colors, according to Aunt Fiona, lawyer, godmother, and witch. Sage, the herb to clear negative energy and the color for prosperity. Lavender for harmony, purple for wisdom. In this incant incarnation, vintage magic oozed character and charm, leaving its day as a morgue than a funereal carriage house to the history books. I moved Chakra from my lap, drove across Bank Street, and pulled straight into my smooth, new tarmac parking lot. I, did, I had yet to see the transformation inside. Between the New York job and condo to sublet, I hadn't been back in the last two weeks. But the minute both were done, I'd packed seven years of my life into a funky rental and beat my ETA by an hour. As a result, Dad, Aunt Fiona, Eve, my best friend, and Nick, my hunky Italian boy toy, weren't here yet. They were due, back, they were due to crack open the secret room with me, secret being relative. Dolly, sweet, friend and centenarian who deeded me the place for the price of taxes, forget to tell me about the second floor storage room. Its doors cut so seamlessly into a wall, I missed it on my pre-ownership tour. Like the rest of us, Dolly couldn't wait to find out what she forgot she sold me. Sure, reports of bumps in the night made me think twice about viewing even the bottom floor alone, but this was my building and I was the only one who hadn't seen its transformation. Besides, I had four things on my side, a key, a can of mace, spike heels, and a watch cat. Who could ask for more? I was going in.